Bhagavati Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya so, Hare Krishna, dear devotees, uh, thank you very much for joining us today. wanted to seek your good wishes. And... Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Lokeshwa, thank you for joining us. wanted to seek your good wishes and your blessings so that we can uh, share something about uh, worshipping at home, uh, which is um, perhaps going to be little bit more the way forward because uh as we were discussing yesterday in in ancient ancient vedic times actually this was the process one established worship at home and would go to the temple occasionally to take uh, association of the devotees and also to recharge one's spiritual batteries um, and to do some seva that's right to the deities but generally, um, generally the worship was mainly done at home. And because of uh, things happening at this moment in time in this world, perhaps that's the direction we're going. And there's some benefits of that um, because you can go to the temple perhaps once a week, once every two weeks, but at home you're there every day. So it's important to actually establish some level of worship that one is comfortable with, but also a little bit of a stretch as well, um, so that we don't get too comfortable uh, with, with our maybe minimal standards. <laughs> so we talked about the five important limbs of bhakti, and I was going to test the devotees who were here yesterday. Anybody remember one of these? Not all of them in one go by one person, but diff I would like five different people to perhaps remind us what are these limbs? They don't have to be in any order. Chanting? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Well, you got the the, be the most important one. <laughs> well reading. done. Reading, someone said. Who said reading? Re Renuka? Yes. <laughs> well done, Renuka, you got it. <laughs> Associate with uh, devotees, uh, with yeah. other. Okay. Very good. Very good. That's that was the fifth one. What was the third one? Uh, yes, yeah, somebody said it. Yes. Yeah. Deity worshipping. Well yes. done. <laughs> nice one. Oh. <laughs> what was the th fourth one? <laughs> Uh, it's a tough one. That's a really tough one. He was Some, living yes. in the Holy Dham. Yeah. Oh, yes. Holy yeah, yeah. Yes. Well done. Yes. And where is the Holy Dham as far as we're concerned? <laughs> Our home. <Vindavan. laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Vindavan can be made at home as well. If we're focused on the Supreme Lord, any place where one is in Krishna consciousness is a Holy Dham. So don't have to physically go to Vindavan, especially in these times when we can't go. So we shouldn't be morose that we can't go to a holy dham. We, we can make our home a holy dham. How do we make it a holy dham? If we do all these four, four things, <laughs> we make it a holy dham. Great. So um, we talked about this very, very briefly. Sanatana Goswami suggests if you can't visit a temple once a day, uh, once a day, <laughs> once a day, then you have a valid reason to establish deities at home or, or some worship at home. And what are the benefits? The children are probably the biggest beneficiaries of deity worship at home. And uh, Rupa Goswami, many of the 64 limbs, we only looked at the four limbs. Anybody remember the other 59? Mm. <laughs> so most of them relate to deity worship, different aspects of deity worship like offering food and doing arti, those will be included as one of the uh, limbs. It also makes us a little bit more disciplined than we are. We have to get up early or get up uh, in time. So we do the puja before um, we do our rest of our duties. 
and it develops more goodness because especially because of cleanliness and we're going to a little bit focus on cleanliness today yesterday we focused on uh, offering uh, our boga our food to krishna we don't eat unoffered food no matter what it is it's always got to be offered even if you're outside perhaps you had to go to a restaurant for whatever any reason maybe due to work so what do you do in the situation like that in your mind you offer the food to Krishna. And you, you, you can, of course, plead to Krishna. This is not the, the best way to offer to you, but please accept this offering. And, and then you take that prashad. If one buys a packet of crisps on the street because you're hungry, not on the street, but uh, when you're outside uh, from a shop, then you open the packet and offer it to Krishna. Shri Vishnu, Shri Vishnu, Shri Vishnu. It can be a very simple offer. At least think of the Lord before diving into the packet of crisps. Um, so the Lord in his personal form, and it can be deity or picture. Uh, there's no difference whether one has a deity or a picture because the Lord is omnipresent. He's present everywhere. He's present in his deity form and he's present in his picture form. So in that sense, there's no difference. If one has a deity, then you got a better chance of uh, developing a more personal relationship because the deity you would perhaps dress, um, you put a flute in his hands, like that. So, um, but essentially, there's no difference between the two. If you have deities, then there's a little bit more requirement of uh, doing some uh, additional deity worship. Anyway, it gives us the unique opportunity of serving him or her personally having a home altar where krishna can be served sanctifies one's home helps create a spiritual atmosphere and where krishna can be at the center now i will talk about where should this altar be ideally but uh, in for many years uh, we had an altar in a very small box room and I, we were never comfortable with that um, because we were almost putting Krishna away into a little, little cubby box, you know. Um, so we were always hankering to get him uh, into the main living room that we were in. And by the Lord's mercy, he allowed us to do that. So he should really be at the center of all attention, if possible. But I, we can understand if... It's not possible, but at least one should have that desire and endeavor, try to try to make it happen. And then he'll find his way. <laughs> he likes to be the center of attention, especially when the devotee wants him to be the center of attention. It also helps the worshiper to fix his mind during japa if he chants in front of the altar. Um, we'll maybe come to that today or we'll do a special japa session on, on that have to be a little bit careful when we're chanting japa if in front of the deities because if we start thinking oh the deities have got nice clothes nice jewelry then possibly one might become diverted from the listening to the holy names so we have to be a little bit careful there of course it's very nice to chant in front of the deities but the focus is still on the holy name, right? Mm -hmm. Home worship, unlike that in the temple, is usually kept simple so that there is more time to chant, more time for kirtan, and it's just more practical. So we, it won't be as high a standard as in the temple, although we know some devotees who keep a very high standard in their homes, which is... Uh, it's, each, it's up to each individual person. There's no uh, set rules or regulations. Whatever you're comfortable with. Maybe a little bit of a stretch is good. To invite Krishna into your home, we need a special place for him. An altar in a separate prayer room or a place separated from the living space by a curtain. These are always good to have. We here don't have a curtain for him, 
Although yeah, we do actually, we do. And uh, when when we when we want to give them the privacy, we have a curtain, we draw it around them. But we don't generally do that. Use that curtain, we like just to feel it again. It's sort of suffocating them. Um, so uh, these, we may not get through all of these today, but at least uh, we'll have a look at some of these, setting up the altar perhaps, deities or picture, which should you have, and the Guru Parampara, where should they be located, offering area, where do you put your boga when you're offering, uh, and where should they be in the house, which direction should they be facing? Uh, generally speaking, the deities shouldn't face south, um, they should face uh, either north or east, even west, or northeast, northwest, like that. But south is generally no. What are the standards one should adopt according uh, in terms of cleanliness, punctuality, purification? Uh, that's a whole topic on its own. And what should we do? Should we do morning or evening or, uh, or both? What are the mantras in the artis? Offering we did yesterday, Tulsi we did yesterday. Mm. Putting low chips to rest, should we put them to sleep at night in a bed? And what to do when we're going away? These are all practical questions. If we have deities, we have to give that some thought. And then of course, ladies have various challenges which also need to be taken into account. So we're not gonna get through all of that, but we'll try a little bit. Uh, just, well, sorry, yeah. just going back to Tulsi, because we were looking at that yesterday, mm, and two, two questions came up yesterday, whether we should chew Tulsi or swallow Tulsi. So we had a quick look, and is recommended you just swallow Tulsi, because yeah. as like Ankit was saying, uh, she has a lot of mercury, which damages your teeth. So that's the scientific reason why you shouldn't chew her. And uh, the spiritual reason is, you know, she's um, a devotee of Vishnu. Uh, she's also you know, the wife of Vishnu. So again, we're disrespecting her uh, by, by chewing her. So one should always just swallow Tulsi. Mm. Uh, and the other thing that came up is uh, making Tulsi garlands. I think uh, Kaushalya asked that. Uh, should we put a needle through the Tulsi leaves to make the garland? And again, again, it, you know, it's, it's not recommended. It's ide ideal to just tie a knot in the thread and then, you know, um, make the garland that way. Mm -hmm. Best not to. Best not to, yeah. Not to. Any questions on those two points? Thank you, Mataji. No problem. <laughs> and, um, and there's, um, if you don't know how to do it, uh, if you look on YouTube, like, uh, you know, just uh, Google, uh, making Tulsi garlands and it shows you how to do it. Okay, Prabhu. Okay, Mataji. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, what does Prabhupada say? In a letter, Prabhupada gave simple instructions for the worship of Go Nithai, Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda. And he wrote, he wrote, he can worship Go Nithai in his home. The most important element for their worship is the chanting of Hare Krishna Mahamantra. They can be at least one arti, and whatever foodstuffs are prepared can be offered. So this was in 75. Generally, uh, we would have Gornitai as uh, deities because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda are very merciful. They don't take into account any mistakes that we commit whilst worshipping. The same may not be true of Radha Krishna. The standards are somewhat uh, different, higher. In another letter, Prabhupada writes, so far as taking care of the deities and your family simultaneously, you have to do both <laughs> mutually. But the main importance is deity worship. Just as like a busy housewife is always busy in household affairs, yet she's still engaged in dressing herself nicely, combing her hair, etc. So both go together. Yes, at least once daily, the deity's clothes must be changed in the morning. So this is, again, little high standard um, if the deities are small as they appear to be from the photo so this is popad then they can be laid down in a bed at night 
and they can be given nightgowns to wear before taking rest. That is nice. If there is time and facility, then these two things, these things can be implemented. So far as bathing is concerned, it requires two hands and one tongue. <laughs> In your left hand, ring a bell. And simultaneously with your right hand, pour water. And with the tongue, you sink the glories of the Lord. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's according to what one uh, can manage. Um, if one has deities, then the more you do, the more of a relationship one builds with the deities. Any questions on this? Okay, let's go into cleanliness. Okay, this is quite a, a big topic, quite a contentious topic perhaps. So always should bathe after passing uh, number, going to number two, after shaving, illicit, I mean, not illicit, <laughs> having illicit, uh, relationships, going to a crematorium. So if, if one goes to a crematorium, come back home and bathe and change all the clothes, everything needs to be washed, cutting hair or nails. So that's, that's, um, that's the standard after doing these things, should bathe. Full bed, full wash. Wash hands before eating. <clears throat> before touching the deities or the altar. Wash hands after touching the mouth or nose. These are considered to be unclean places. So if we touch the mouth, then should really uh, wash hands touching a broom or dustpan and brush, after touching the toilet or, or toilet brush, after drinking water, unclean items, eating pushad or drinking water. So this is the standard after uh, doing one of these things, should wash hands. Ideally. Especially in COVID times now, everyone's told to wash their hands. <laughs> yeah. So it comes down to our Vedic. <laughs> So I have a question. Yeah. When when you're praying and you sneeze and you have to blow your nose, you'd have to go and wash your hands again and then. Yes, you would. Okay. What if you use a tissue and all that? Still, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, Because I because of the tooth, I always. Mm. Yeah. Sneeze and the ghee when it burns, I sneeze. So I wasn't oh, yeah. sure. But, <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you just sneeze, then it's fine. But if you have to blow your nose, yes. All sure. oh, right. right. I thought you always cut your nails after shower, so you no before 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah yeah. It's considered unclean now. Once you cut oh, your nails, yeah. you're supposed to shower. Okay, so cut it before shower. Yeah, yeah. you cut it after because it's soft, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. I've been up. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. That's, that's that, standard okay. thinking. Yeah, but rest, I it's all I I I was very I I wasn't know. sure about sneezing because yeah okay. So wash my hands and then start again. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Uh, now this is always perform Achaman before doing deity worship. So Achaman is a procedure that we can go through uh, when we look at, um, when we do Aarti. Achaman is basically having a pot, maybe usually a copper or brass pot, with some Ganga gel in it. And you have a spoon, and you use that to wash your clean your hands and things like that. Um, before you actually do any deity worship or offering food like that. But that's again, it's a little bit um I think most people won't be doing that unless they're aware of doing RT. So we can go through that one time, do a practical demonstration. Always have a shower when one rises. So after a sleep, it's good to shower. Use your right hand for eating and drinking. This is like um, pretty basic. Even if you're a left-handed person, try to use your right hand when you're eating. 
and drinking. So that can, it can be a challenge if all your life you've been a left-hander and uh, you've been eating with your left hand. But the left hand is used um, to, for unclean purposes. And that's why we don't eat with the left hand, we eat with the right hand. Always wear clean clothes. Um, after waking up, first brush your teeth and afterwards take a bath. Some people do it the other way around. They have a bath and then they brush their teeth. But the idea is to brush your teeth because then you've touched your mouth and then you have to take a bath and you clean again. Any questions on these points? Haribol, <coughs> the first one uh, saying yes about uh, <coughs> sorry <coughs> Achman and washing your hands is just few drops in the day. You don't have to literally. Mm. Mm. So that's because you've already washed late. your hands properly. This is yes. just with Ganga Jal then. Ganga Jal, yeah. Okay. <coughs> Okay, um, decide the minimum standard for your home altar and deity worship. So what is the, the minimum standard? That's up to you to decide. And it might be that you wipe the altar and the pictures after every offering, offering of food, um, wearing clean clothes for arti and cooking, doing achaman before arti, waking up the lordships in the morning. So if you have deities and you put them to sleep, you can wake them up and put them on the altar, place them on the altar, offering boga in a special plate, offering fruit and milk. Leave a, you can leave a glass of water uh, by the picture of the deities and can change that water every single day. So that water is always there for them to drink. Uh, offer arti at least once a day and that it can be simple arti incense ghee lamp flower we we add uh, water in a conch handkerchief and chamara and a peacock fan in the summer but even if one just offers very simple arti with just ghee lamp that's fine the ghee lamp is extraordinarily powerful it gives a clean message to the Lord that I want to become very close to you. Go on. And it comprises all, all the five elements as well. So, Explain that. Uh, so which, which is earth, water, fire, air, and ether. So the earth is the uh, key, uh, the lamp that it's made from. Uh, uh, the uh, fire is the actual wick, which is burning. Uh, the water is the ghee or the oil. Uh, and ether and air are the... Um, uh, smoke and the uh, offering, offering the, yeah, yeah, offering that you're doing. Cooking and offering everything, uh, offer at least once a day. So even if, say, one day you're not eating because it's bhimi kalashi, um, but the deities don't do ikalashi, they eat. <laughs> so should still cook and offer that to them. And that can be ex eaten the, or, or honoured the next day. But if you're not well, like for Aruna, mm. you was asking yesterday, you know, sometimes if she's not well, mm. not, not cooking, at least just offer some milk and some fruits. Uh, if every, possible. Yeah, every yeah. day. Yeah. Oh, possible. yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, if possible. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to offer water every day. You leave a glass of water every day. If it's possible, yeah. yes. That's, that's yeah, a yeah. good thing to do. If it's possible. Yeah, have a little gla little small glass next to them. Yeah. Uh, if yeah. you have, yeah. Yeah, yeah I do. Yeah. yeah, nice. Stainless steel or copper. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. 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 Perfect. Thank you. Uh, and putting them to rest at night if mm -hmm. one has... Mm -hmm. uh, a bed and small deities. <clears throat> Even if, if you don't have a bed and you, you just leave them, you know, standing there, at least try and put a shawl mm. around them at night. Yeah. Good. So you know that you you uh, that you're having that distinction that it, you know they're going to sleep now, mm. and then in the morning you take that shawl off. Mm. That's actually what we do here. Um, yeah, because we don't have room to put them all to have their beds and put them all to sleep. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, my personal opinion on deity worship is keep it to a very minimum standard. Uh, it is a way to develop one's relationship with the Lord for sure. But um, this age is the holy, the holy names, chanting of the holy names is the, the way that we really re-establish re our connection with God. Deity worship was uh, predominant in Dwapa Yuga. In temples it's different. The standard has to be good, high because you're formally inviting the lordships and in a public place. So the standard has to match. But at home, it can be according to uh, how, you, how you feel, how you want to worship. If you spend many hours doing worship at home, uh, there's nothing wrong, of course. And it is a spiritual activity. And you're also developing personal relationship with the Lord at the same time. Um, but just bear in mind that are you, as a result of that, reducing the chanting of the holy names? If your chanting of the holy names is at the same high standard, that's really fantastic, really fantastic. But if the deity worship is taking having all a, the time. yeah, taking all the time, having a detrimental effect mm -hmm. on your chanting, then in this age of Kali Yuga, we've missed the point. The point is the chanting of the holy mm -hmm. names. Chanting and reading as well. You should have, you should, you should try and read every day as well. Mm. Mm. And also, I, I, I would advise everyone that you should have a minimum standard. And then, you know, over time, you can build on that, but don't set a high standard and then you have to drop that standard. Mm. So that's, that would send the wrong message to Krishna. Mm. Decide the minimum standard for your home altar and, oh, yeah, so I've done that one. <laughs> okay, so what is a standard one can perhaps adopt at home? Offer a full meal once a day when one cooks for the family. So that same meal you're cooking for the family can be offered to the Lord. As we discussed yesterday, you have a special plate with katoris and you put a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. Preferably, you fill up the plate because Krishna's mood is that of a hungry little boy. <laughs> so he's hungry. You fill up the plate. <laughs> you can do arti once a day. Again, as we said, uh, simple. We can wake up, put the Lord chips to rest, clean the altar at least once a week, and try to change the deity's dresses regularly if one has deities. That would be the uh, perhaps a, a basic minimum standard. If you want to go a little bit more, you can offer fruit and milk in the morning and also a, a full meal, either noon or lunch or, or evening. You can do arti twice a day, morning, evening. And the full works, conch shell, incense, ghee lamp, water, handkerchief, flower, chamara, and peacock fair. Wake them up, put them to rest. Uh, clean the altar every day, change the dresses every day. It depends on how much time you have. And also your, your bhav, your, you know, as, as you become more and more attached to deities, then you find that, oh, I want to do this. But then as Jenti said, keep, build on the, a, a, a minimum standard, build on it. Mm. Stick to a standard for some time. Mm. Once you're comfortable, then, yeah, then you can introduce more things. Always good to have a little stretch, but but don't stretch it so much that you lose your um, time or ability of chanting with full mm -hmm. concentration. Yeah, you shouldn't be stressed out doing it. <laughs> yeah, stretched but not stressed. Mm. Oh, what happened there? <laughs> <That's> nice. <laughs> so this we can go through another time. Uh, I've got another. Uh, uh, presentation we did a few years ago on RTs, but I won't go through this now uh, unless anybody wants to, and then I can bring up that other presentation. Does anybody want to go through the RT? How we do RT? Okay, so we went through all this yesterday. Did we do 
Yeah, yeah. Okay. Any questions on what we talked about yesterday? You perhaps thought about it a bit more and thought, hmm, that's a little hard, a little tricky. Or why didn't I say this? Okay, so this is a nice place to be. Um, prayers before eating. Now, it's it's a good habit to get into. It's a bit like... Um, you're thanking the Lord for everything he's giving, giving yeah, you. Yeah, you're thanking him for the mercy. It's a bit like the, the, the Christian community. Before they eat, they say... Thank you for this bread. Yeah, thank you for the bread. Of course, we want to thank him for a lot more than that. And there's a really nice prayer. Uh, because we don't take Pashad so much together with devotees nowadays, this prayer doesn't get said much. Uh, we say it every day, but before one eats, this is a very, very nice prayer to say. So we can do that all, uh, we can, I can repeat, I can say it and you can repeat. Charira Vidya Jao Charira Vidya Jao Jogendriya Tahe Kao Jodendriya Tahe Kao Jeeva Pele Vishai Shagare Jeeva Pele Vishai Shagare Dharma De Jivayati Dharma De Jivayati Lopa Moi Sudharmati Lopa Moi Sudharmati Take Jita Kutina Samsare Take Jita Kutina Samsare Krishna Bara Doya Moi Krishna Bara Doya Moi Gauri Bara Jeeva Joy Gauri Bara Jeeva Joy Swapashadam Dillo Bhai Swapashadam Dillo Bhai Sayanam Ritta Pao Sayanam Ritta Pao Radha Krishna Gunagao Radha Krishna Gunagao Prema Deko Sri Chaitanya Nitai Prema Deko Chaitanya Nitai Jai Nimai Jai Nitai Jai Nimai Jai Nitai Ma Prashad Ki Jai so, would somebody like to read the prayer? Uh, maybe uh, Anil, would you like to read uh, this uh, prayer in English? Oh, maybe he's not there. Uh, Lokeshwa, would you like to read the English? Oh, oh, brothers, this material body is a place of ignorance and the senses are a network of paths to death. The senses that throw the soul into this ocean of material sense enjoyment and of all the senses, the tongue is most um voracious and uncontrollable. It is very difficult to conquer the tongue in this world. Oh brothers, Lord Krishna is very kind to us and has given us such nice prashadam just to control the tongue. Now let us take this prashadam to our full satisfaction and glorify the Lordships, Shishi Radha and Krishna and in love call for the help of Lord Chaitanya and Prabhu Nichananda. Well done. Very nicely. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, so where are you? There you are. Very important prayer. Um, basically, we, we know the tongue is, can be very uncontrollable. We want to taste so many different things. We want to say so many different things. So when we take Pashad, uh, what Pashad can do is conquer this tongue because it's actually very difficult to conquer. But Krishna has given us, it's very kind and given us this nice Pashad just to control the tongue. So this prayer, it, um, if we say it, and it gives us uh, a little bit more awareness of what we're doing because sometimes we just gulp the food down and we don't even realize we finish the plate we're watching the tv and or doing some other multitasking event don't even realize we finished uh, and suddenly we've eating another plate we've overeaten but if we're conscious of what we're eating 
we find that uh, we even eat less because we, we become satisfied by um, being aware of how much we're eating, what we're eating. I don't know if anybody's experienced that, but when your mind is away from your food and you're eating, it, it can become uncontrollable. So this uh, prayer can focus our attention a little bit on uh, the food that we eat, the pushadam that we honor. Uh, and it's a wonderful prayer. And it's in Bengali. And it's again written by Bhakti Vinod Thakur in Gitavali. So we'll come to that hopefully in due course of time. Any questions? Is anybody doing these prayers before eating? Lokeshwar, do you do these? Do you chant these prayers before eating? Um, sometimes I forget, Raji. Yes, yes, that's okay. But you know it, huh? You know the prayer. Uh, uh no, uh, I don't re No, I I read it on a poster. Oh, okay, okay. This there's, there's two prayers which um, are very, uh, very um, <laughs> interesting prayers. One of them is Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. When somebody is going to give class, they say Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. And that prayer can put you to sleep because usually classes can be a little bit um, tough to get through, <laughs> put you to sleep. But there's a mantra that can wake you up. And this is the mantra. Sharira Vidya Ja. So that mantra said, hey, who said that? <laughs> we wake up because it's time for Pushadam. And there's a lot of enthusiasm suddenly developed in our psyche. <laughs> so um, any anybody else who recites this prayer before eating or honoring Pushad? Yes, terrible. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Kaushalya Maaji? Yes, Prabhu. You chant this prayer before eating? No, Prabhu. Okay, you can get in the habit of doing that. Okay, Prabhu, I'll try. Which one yeah. is this one? This is, um, I'll send it in the, uh, I'll send these notes. So mm -hmm. it'll be in there. This is the Pashad prayer. Sharira Vidya Jal. Have you heard that before? No, Prabhu. Ah, okay. So before honoring Pashad, this prayer can be spoken. Very, very nice prayer. Okay, Prabhu. Send me, please. I will do. I will do. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay. okay. Wow. Hmm. Five more. Any questions? Anything you'd like to know more about what we talked about? Who has deities at home? Mm. Adam. Even if it's like little Ladu Gopalan. Just have a small one. But it's already dressed, so I don't have to dress them on, on dress. Mm. <laughs> and I've raised them. I put a little, they were like all same yeah. level, but I've raised them now. Good, good. Oh, yeah, we didn't talk about that. That's a good point. Uh, oh, a different level. Different yeah, level. I saw everybody else's were higher, and then I thought, hmm, maybe I should put them little. Ah. Yeah. Wow, yeah. Well yeah, yeah, yeah. Th there's a reason, like you know, we should have Krishna or Radha and Krishna at the top. Yeah, and the next level is usually Gornitai. Yeah, uh, so it's, it'll be Radha, Krishna, Sita, Ram. They're all on the same level, mm. uh, you know, Balram and things like that. And also, um, Ladu Gopal would be on that same level. Yeah, yeah. And then the second level would be Gornitai if you have, and then the uh, bottom level will be all the Guru Parampara and. Um, you know, uh, like Ganesh or someone like that. Uh, so Ganesh, they would all be in the level of the Guru Parampara, uh, mm. you know, like special devotees. So that's why they have different levels. Yeah, thank you. That is in... Yes. Uh, so uh, demigods, in other words, Ganesh. Uh, yeah. You, I've got a little Shivji deity. Yeah. I've always had it, so I can't really part with it so I have it but it's not on the same level as Radha Krishna it's on the low yeah. as you say that's right yeah and Hanumanji is yeah okay. ideally Lord Shiva should be higher than the gurus mm. uh, ideally mm -hmm. if it's possible yeah and one way to do that is maybe just put a mm. 
little platform. Us, little yeah. platform. Just raise it above. Just yes, raise it above the guru because uh, right. he's special. Yeah. He is, yeah. Personality. Thank you. Anybody else? Anything else on this on this subject matter? Um, anything that you think? Whoa, uh, Aruna, you have a Laddu Gopal, do you? Laddu Gopal. No. I just have Radha Krishna. Okay, Radha Krishna, good. Yeah, ba baby. Okay, Laddu is a baby. Baby one. With the Laddu in his hand. Oh, sure. no, no, I don't. Okay, in a okay. No, no, that's fine. That's good. That, because most people have that. Actually. Oh, okay. okay yeah, I, and then on the side, I have uh, Damodar and Yashinga. Yeah, and then you've got Nashinga now. You've yeah, and I've got Nashinga on the left. Yeah. 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 Slowly, slowly. I'll have good. The, good. Yeah. So over time, once you're comfortable, maybe, like, yeah. I don't know if you put, uh, put them to sleep at night. Yeah, I I just heard you say that I, I yeah. can crochet a little uh, scarf yeah. and then I'll yeah. put it around. Good. I'll do that. Yeah. Yeah. And then in yeah. the morning, just take it off. So it's it's yeah. just you know it's just that's how you're building a relationship because like that's like your children, you know, you put them to sleep and then wake them up in the morning, like that. Yeah. Yeah, because I, and I, I like the idea that uh, you said put the water because when I'm not well and I'm thinking, oh no, I haven't done anything today. Uh -huh. So if yeah. the water's there, good. I guess yeah, good. That will just, yeah, give me. Yeah. And if you can't do anything, more. just put uh, like an apple or something also you know, there, at least so, you know, or, yeah. or, or some nuts all day. They can yeah. just be there all day. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, great. Okay, we'll do. Definitely. Thank you. Yeah. So, you, you and, know, you just have a little, little plate of nuts or something there. And just can put a tissue them. on it so it's covered. So no so like, insects go on it. Oh, right. Okay. And like you said yesterday, the bog plate, you have to wash it straight away. So when you do the uh, uh, divo, so you should take that off, off at night or so just after you've uh, done your arti and prayers and you take that off straight away and wash it? Yes, that's what okay. we do. Yeah, you don't yeah. leave it there. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'll have to order and some more stuff. It's always kept clean and tidy. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I wash every day and everything, but it's just, yeah. So yeah, I have to get time. extra ones, so then I always have clean ones there. Yeah, yeah. good. And, and uh, you sell? Hare Krishna, Mataji, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So Prabhuji, like uh, after listening some of the previous classes, uh, I changed my altar. And uh, uh, what I did was... Um, Recently, I had, I had got a one wooden platform just mm. uh, above the fireplace, a long wooden platform. So I kept all the deities over there. They are all in line with uh, Radha Krishna deities. Uh, they have their own stand. Good. And they are in their own wonderful dresses. <laughs> so I don't touch, I don't change the dresses. Yeah. Uh, there are lots of things uh, with the deities like the mukuts and the bansuri and mm. and uh, so many things. So they were all set up sometimes back. Mm. So I I feel like I have difficulties in changing. So so yeah. I just leave all of them. They are in their in their full set. In their and uh, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. that's how I have kept my altar. Yeah. That's fine. That's fine. Um, that is okay. Uh, but if 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 you have time, and it doesn't distract you from the chanting of the holy names, um, you can you can do a little seva. You know, like uh, change the uh, mukhots and things like that. Something that doesn't take a huge amount of time. And just just think on your think to yourself. What can I manage to do easily? Maybe once a week. Maybe every ikadashi, because ikadashi you eat less. So hey, I got a few extra minutes. Let me spend that time with the low chips and you know mm -hmm. that way. You know, chanting is great. It, we have to do many different. In Kali Yuga, our minds are just not focused. If we just chant all day, we can't do it. If we just do deity worship all day, we can't do it. If we read all day, we can't do it. So we do a little bit of everything. We chant, we do a little bit of seva. 
that way, you know, variety is a spice of life. Uh, <laughs> it, it, sometimes we can take spiritual life to be a bit monotonous because we're not at the high level of understanding. So if we do different activities, also the mind gets a little engaged. Um, that's just the way I see, the way I operate. I, I do one hour deity worship. I do two hours chanting, one hour deity worship, and then I'm at the desk doing what are the research. And I just feel that that's a good mix of different savers. And I'm not, uh, I'm, I, I'm not bored with any of that. I really enjoy everything I do. Um, so it's good to do a little bit of deity worship for sure. A little bit for sure. Uh, not it's over, over yeah, not overdoing it so that uh, it takes you away from the real focus of chanting the holy names. Just have a think. See what uh, what is easy for you, easy for you to do. <laughs> That's a good way to build a relationship. When you see them, you think, "Ah, oh, yes, look at that uh, beautiful smile, nice mukut," you know, and just adds a little bit more personal relationship. That's all. Yes, uh, Pitamba, you want to say? Oh, you can't speak, huh? Okay. Oh, good, yeah. Say what you uh, written. Hare Krishna. Yes, Hare Krishna. Uh, yes, you know what it is with, what's really nice is if you get the incense going and you've offered it to Krishna, the, you know, there's so many, you know, um, bhajans you can sing as well. And, you know, the Namaste and the Jaira, the Madhav, nice and short, you know, and if you've got... Uh, Laddu Krishna there, Jaya Radha Madhav with Krishna deities, it just, you know, adds on to the flavor of the whole um, atmosphere. Yeah, that's, you're right. Absolutely right. That's another thing we can do. You're absolutely right. Chanting a bhajan in front of the lordships. It will please them. Yeah. No, I've even, <clears throat> Go on. I've even started, um, like, you know, when I offer the flowers, because I buy them from Tesco's and you get them um, flowers with the leaves. I offer the flowers as well, but now I've started also offering the leaves and I put the leaves in a pattern. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Along, works. like they do in the temple. And uh, my next stage is what I'm thinking of doing is creating like a little har of leaves, which I can just, you know, um, you know, put along the altar top bit or something. You know, I've seen it done at the temples where the leaves are on around the altar not mm. part of it but around it so you know i think the idea is more just to get you involved get the senses involved yes. in in the interaction you know so it, the chanting is one that's the big one so if you're getting your 16 rounds done or even more you know you're already you're already on a win-win situation and all this extra stuff are bonuses you know and um one complements the other as they say do you want to show us your altar? Is that possible? Because I remember you worked hard on it and it was a really nice altar. Okay, one second. And anybody else wants to show the altar, please do, go, go ahead and do that. Oh, Krishna, can you see me? Yeah, we can see you. Okay. Um... Yeah. See the nice pictures all round. Hmm. Good. Good. Thank you so much. I want you want to see ours? Yes, please. Put the light on first one second, if I can reach it. <laughs> OK. 
Sí. Yeah, very nice. It's good with that. Yeah, good, good. Prabhupada, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. And uh, Sri Nathi over there. Oh, yeah. And Ganesh and oh, Mahadevji. <laughs> I've got Hanumanji in this side. <laughs> and uh, Yashodamaya and Damodar with yes. Radha Ramanji. And the Parampara. Good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Very nice. Beautiful. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. Another thing that you can also do is like when you're reading, you're doing your reading, you could again read in front of your altar and you can read out loud to the deities that they love to hear their glories. That's, <laughs> a, br that's a brilliant idea, Mataji. Absolutely <laughs> brilliant rather than sitting on the couch, as they say. And, um, well, you can yeah. sit on the couch, but you, you can read out loud as, as long as they can hear you. You don't have to sit maybe directly in front of them, but if you're in, in that vicinity and you can read out loud, they can hear you. Okay. Great, anybody else, anything else? I just suggest something to Aruna through you. Uh, mm -hmm. When she says she's not well and if I can't offer anything, she should involve her daughter, try to yeah. get her to offer some fruit or yeah, just, true. so that that give her a chance to relate. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that good. Yeah. Good idea. Even when yeah. you're well, you can say to uh, your daughter. Oh, why don't you just go and offer this? <laughs> I'm sure they'd be happy to see you. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, um, sometimes I say, it's Krishna and Imarji, I'm not well. Then she goes, oh, mom, Krishna and Imarji, you're not well. So she says it. <laughs> <laughs> that way she says it. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, that's yeah. fine. That's fine. Yeah. But see, you know, see, persuade her. Maybe just say, you know, I... I Krishna might be hungry. Just go and offer some apples or something. Cut up an apple and offer that. See how, how, how it goes down. Sure, I'll try. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If she leaves home tomorrow. <laughs> My mom's gone mad. <laughs> <laughs> but no, now she's, she's saying that Krishna, Krishna and Imarji with everything, whenever I say, she's saying it as well. Yeah, so say this is Krishna's wish. He wants an apple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was she saying, Kanji? Kamakshi, you were going to say something? I was just saying, uh, 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 so that you can get her to do it. It's just, you don't have to force her. Just say. Yeah. That's the prashad. I, I always do it. So now I can't do it. So if you don't mind doing it, yeah. if you say if you don't mind doing it, then she probably feel comfortable. But if you got to do it, then she mm. won't do it. <laughs> yeah. Good. But, uh, uh, she won't leave home. She's too attached to her mother. <laughs> <laughs> In that case, give her the chanting meter to her two hours every day <laughs> before you wake up. <laughs> <laughs> she might say go to the mental hospital or something <laughs> she won't leave home but she'll take mum to the hospital she's very good daughter she looks after her very well thanks <laughs> good. Krishna is Marji again it's all about Krishna. Yeah. Indeed, know. indeed. So, yes, I leave everything to Krishna the way she's turned out, being a single mom. It's all Krishna. No one else. Yeah. No one. No one. That's all I say. Yeah, you done well. You done and well. I call her, she tells me to call her Kano, and I call her Kano, and she loves it. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So in my phone, I've got her as Kano because that's how she wants it. <laughs> Very nice. Oh. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. It's interesting. <laughs> Uh, okay, that's great. Terry, we can, unless there's any questions or comments, we can uh, do the Nishinga coverage. Okay, that's fine. 